Hey guys, Teresa Barber with Sippy Couture. I want to invite you guys all to check out our Sippy Couture community Facebook group. We have some lives, giveaways, and exciting coupon codes over there. And also please subscribe to this page. There's a few uh, exciting things we have going on. I don't want you to miss out. For this tumbler, I'm going to show you how to drop those inks down where the colors don't mix together in a big old jumble. So I hope you enjoy. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, guys, this design is so easy. So I have this tumbler spray painted white. Um, there's a few spots where my paint went runny or it got um, it kind of blotchy right here. This weather we've been having has been so humid lately that none of my paints have been wanting to dry. And then I couldn't find um, any of the flat white spray paint at the store. Like all I could find was the um, primer. So I don't know, a little adjustment. It's weird whenever you switch spray paints and you have to like adjust to something new. It's um, kind of crazy. But um, still, here we go. It's on here. Um, this is just a shark image that I got off Google that the customer requested, and I put it on printable, printable vinyl. Um, so next, we're going to just get our epoxy on here. I mean, this is all for the image, and watch how easy this is. I'm going to be using Speed Dry Epoxy. It is a fast-setting epoxy from Mr. Nola's Glitter. So I want to make sure that I have, woo, that's a mess that I have these colors kind of divided up first because once I get that epoxy mixed, I have to work super quick. These micas that I'm using is from Woody's Goodies. This is Moon Shadow. It is so pretty. This is like a gorgeous navy color. I want my colors to be, um, to be pretty punchy. So I put a good bit in there. Um, you can do less and you can even change up these colors. Like if you wanted to do a different theme, you could totally change these colors up and make it work um, with something else. This one is Siren Light, also from Woody's Goodies. Just put a good bit in there, and then I'm going to do white, just white epoxy dye from Illumilite. I'm going to put a little drip in here. All right. And then we'll get our epoxy mixed up and then dump it into those. All right, I have roughly 40 mLs each of epoxy um, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be mixing together. So 40 part, part A and 40 part B of Speed Dry. Normally I like to do this and um, kind of, um, what I'll do is I'll mix these together. I'll set it in a warm little bucket of water and mix. And it helps me mix it a lot easier since it is a fairly thick epoxy. Um, but since I need this epoxy to not set up super, super fast, if you, okay, I need to start over with explaining that, don't I? <laughs> um, so a fast setting epoxy. If you introduce any heat to your epoxy, it's going to set up even faster. And this epoxy goes quick. The work time is about 20 minutes or so, but the way that I normally do it, I combine them in a cup. I sit this in a warm bath of water, um, and it helps kind of thin it out a little, warm it up and make it easier to mix. Um, and then I will transfer it into another cup and do the same thing. Mix it really good um, in a little warm bath of water and, uh, and it helps, it mixes it really, really great. The only thing with that is that it will cut down your work time. So instead of having 20 minutes of you know open work time with it, you might cut that down to like 10, um, maybe even more depending on how warm that gets. Once it starts to warm up, that's when that little activation process starts to happen. Once it starts mixing is when it actually starts to happen. Once it warms up, um, you got to move quick. So for this method, um, whatever I'm doing it like this, I need it to last for a minute so I actually don't put it in a warm bath. Um, it makes it a little tougher to mix together um, just because I'm so used to it the other way, but um, we can still make it happen. I need to put on gloves. to lose the gloves for some of that mixing it was just it's hard it wasn't used to mixing with gloves on I put them on and then I just I got thrown off all right so we're gonna go ahead and transfer this into these cups um, it's better to have too much than not enough especially with this design because once you get this going it's gonna be hard to combine it after we start moving this um, epoxy around and then if you had to go and mix up a little more there's a chance that those colors won't quite match 
um, you know, your original amounts because I don't, I didn't measure it. I just kind of put it in here. You pretty much want the same amount of the blues and um, maybe half of that for the white. If uh, you can adjust those colors depending on how much you actually want. And usually what I do is I put, I use this cup to put the white in, but I was in such a hurry to kind of get this in here. I um, wasn't quite thinking and I put my white in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mix this up. Would usually rather put my white and micas on top of like pour the epoxy in my cup first, then drop the micas and stuff on top. I feel like it's easier to mix that way, but um, for the sake of getting this done super, super quick, like I just have to be careful. So we're making sure this is mixed all the way through. Look how pretty that blue is. And I used a ton, like y'all saw how much mica I put in here. I used a ton of mica. Um, I just like for these colors to be really, really deep. If you wanted to do this design for a girl, um, one of the easy things to do that would make it really pretty also is to um, throw a little glitter in some of these. Um, what, uh, what glitter was I just thinking? 504 would be a really pretty good one to throw in. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to move quick. We're gonna take our blue. I am not putting down epoxy first. We do not have a layer of epoxy on this because we don't want it to move around and we're going to go ahead and put it down in chunks. One of the things with not putting down your layer of epoxy first is that it won't slide around. Um, the other part with that is that if you put on big drips, you'll notice that the drips will kind of drip off of the cup because they won't really, like you see how they can't slide around too much because they have nothing to move on. Um, so you will get a bit of drips coming off of this onto uh, under your cup but that's only because they don't have a way to slide around. And I cover this just a little. I go on in here because I want it to all blend. I'm gonna get this blue on here a good bit. I mean, look, and I'm just throwing this on here messy. Like there's nothing about this application right now that's pretty. Um, I'm not trying to make it pretty. I'm just trying to get it on super fast. <laughs> and it all, it'll all tie together. Like it will work its way together. This blue is the color that I really need to go around here to help cover this up. The blues will wipe that off of his face. Okay, we have that down. Now we're gonna go with our next blue. I'm not worried about bubbles right now. If you add any heat right now, this stuff will, um, will start to set up and I need more time. So I'm adding blue in between some of those. Trying to get into all of these lines. Oh, that piece went thick. I'm kind of tapping it on here just to help it um, get on a little quicker. I do bring this epoxy right here kind of up into the design to make it look like the water just like he's swimming into the water or swimming through the water, I guess. And this is a lot of it. You just alternate colors. I mean, this is a lot of epoxy that ends up being on the cup like this. <laughs> like a lot, a lot. We'll add some more. Get that off of him. Once you start getting this epoxy where it's touching the other colors, that's when it will start running together. So when you see the part, let me get some white in before it gets a little too late. Put a little white through it. Whoop, that's a big scoop.
that's what I was saying. Once these epoxies start touching is when it'll start to move around your cup more. Um, so you have a bit of, a little bit of time, you know, with dropping colors on. Also with doing this, you'll have where the bottom of your cup, since it's a lot of epoxy, you may have a little rim build up around your cup. Um, you know, like a little bubble at the bottom. It's super easy to get that off. Uh, if I have a, you know, a spot that I'm really not happy with, what I'll actually do is go on with my sander after this is done and I will sand it down and get rid of like that big old bubble. Start pulling some more of this white down. The good thing with this is that if it does start to swirl too much, this fast, um, you know, the speed dry epoxy, since it is a fast setting epoxy, you can pull it up and actually drop some more down with it not really moving because it will start to um, keep in place a little more. I want to make sure I have that white kind of even throughout. This is getting a little too scattery, so we can always lift some up and kind of pull it through. Need a little white right there. And then you can see how the colors are kind of staying in place. They're not moving a ton on me. So now I'm just taking some of this navy and filling in places. I definitely want to film it around the line of this paper so that you can't see it. Of that blue kind of blended in a little more. And then from here, I'll probably be done with this epoxy pulling more. I'm just gonna work these colors into a direction to kind of stop them from going sideways. So like right here, anywhere you see the cup, just go ahead and tap it. You're just closing in those gaps. Once you close in these little white parts, that's when your um, epoxy will really start flowing. But like I said, since we're using this speed dry epoxy, it's set up really good. It won't wanna um, change too much. Like the design I have down won't wanna change too much. This is all we're doing, going through and closing up some of these white gaps where you can see the cup. I'm gonna switch it and turn it the other way. There we go. And this will help too, because of the direction that I dropped it, I can kind of pull it that way. So just flatten your popsicle stick and smush them together. Keep going. Probably need a little more white to drop down in there. And I could probably put white right there. Let's see, where is it? You can see already it's starting to thicken up in the cup. If I can feel it getting warm. This epoxy will want, to, will want to pull away from the rim since there is a lot of it. Um, the more epoxy you have, the more it will pull away from the edges of your tumbler. But the way that I clean off the tumbler for this, it won't really matter all that much anyway. Every once in a while, if I have uh, um, one of my boys home, I'll have him grab a the blue, you know, one of the blue cups. I'm like, okay, you drop this color, I'll drop this one. <laughs> Just get it done twice as fast and I have a lot more time to mix it and really get the colors that I want. All right, so you can see right there, it's not quite covered. You see how the holes of the cup right here, you can see the white of the tumbler. Pull those colors together. If it starts to set up and you're kind of running out of time, then you can get a torch and that will help to get um, these a little more 
you know, soften them up a little so you can run them together. I usually go for the big pieces. If I see any big spots that need to blend, I'll definitely make sure I get those. And it kind of works together. Like it, the design blends itself in um, and you can't quite tell it's a cup right there. So if you have a few spots that you did miss, it's okay. I mean, but you can see how it pretty much all stayed still. Everything put where I dropped it. This got a little too um, swirly. I'll see if I can set some white at the bottom to kind of play it off. Definitely around here. And um, I'm going to message Rachel over at Mr. Nola's Glitter today and see if she can get some shark sticky sheets. Because I know that this is an image that um, a customer sent. Um, but to have, you know, just a sticky sheet would be just so easy. You don't have to worry about the printing it or... I mean, my printer is just not fun to work with sometimes. Especially if it's not wanting to get color done. It's like sometimes it likes me and sometimes it doesn't. Get that out of here, out of his face. Okay, so I'm going to grab my torch now just so that I can get some of these places where the white is showing through. And like I said, it's not a big deal if you do that. Um, you know, if you don't do that part because it kind of blends in, but I want to make sure that I don't have any big, this like right there is a big piece. And it will also help to pop any bubbles that are trying to um, come through there. And I don't mind that big run right there. Um, I can probably take a minute and put a little more parts of um, blue into that to kind of play that off. I don't want this long piece right here. But if you extend your, uh, your epoxy into it, it really gives it this cool look. Like almost like a 3D of him swimming through the water. It's really neat. This is a super popular design that I've had for boys. All right, how much more of this do I have? How much time do I have? Still a little bit. Oh, that needs to cover up. This is really starting to set up now. I can feel it. All right, so I'm going to take this and drop it through and kind of play off how they have that one drip. And give me a few more. When I pull it away, you can see the strings coming off the epoxy. That's how you know it's really starting to set up on you. Like besides being able to feel the warm bucket, um, you can feel it through there. I mean, you can see the strings. All right, any big spots? Whenever you're doing this, just pull it up. Like if you're closing in a gap, just make sure you would keep extending in that same direction. That way, if you get any any kind of ribbons of epoxy, it falls in that same direction. It kind of plays it off. So you like if you just continue it on, it mixes it together and it's fine. And I still don't have any epoxy covering the shark image at all. Because if I did, then what would happen is that the epoxy that I put down, it would run into his face. It would run across that. So I don't have any epoxy on that um, as of right now. My next layer of epoxy, just a regular epoxy, no dye in that, it, I will cover up his face and start to um, make sure all of this is even. That we want to go to put my decal, it's on, um, it's on kind of a level surface and it's not like really wavy from this method. All right, I'm going to run through and pop bubbles because I know that working this up, I've kind of whipped some bubbles into it. I'm not going to do a ton of heat because I don't want this to move around. The way that it fell is a really good mix of this color, and I don't want it to move. Adding heat right now will um, help it move around, but I just want to pop any bubbles. Usually with this design, see how that's going? Usually with this design, if there are bubbles, it doesn't, um, it doesn't even matter. Like it doesn't do anything. It kind of plays in since it is, oh my goodness, setting up so quick. Another stick. All right, all these pieces that are starting to really swirl that way, I'm gonna pull them up. 
and switch that the other way. You're going to extend all that so it kind of plays it off. Kind of get that too and pull it down. And then I'm going to leave it alone in a minute so I don't mess anything up. All right, so that's it. That's it for this design. It's super easy. You're just getting the inks, um, your epoxies on there and mixing it around. Like I said, you end up using a ton of epoxy for this, but it does give a really cool effect where everything just kind of stays in its place um, and it doesn't change colors on you. It's really good if you want to mix, you know, colors that will tend to go brown once they touch together. Um, it's a really good method for keeping those separate. So uh, we'll bring you to the next step once this cures in about two to three hours um, of just putting the next layer of epoxy on here. The next side of this is we're gonna get a little epoxy to cover the decal. Mainly what I'm doing with this is I'm covering the decal and I'm also going through and making sure that any holes where the cup was, um, that I can't even think right now, <laughs> when that epoxy, when I put that epoxy and I kind of swirled it, I'm going through to make sure any holes that the epoxy kind of skipped over where the cup was throwing, showing through. And it wasn't even a lot of them. Um, but I want to make sure that I do get epoxy in there. The main reason for that part is to, um, I'm putting a name on the back of this and I want to be sure that I have a clean surface for that name to go on. You know, it's not going to be wavy or anything underneath. Um, and then after that, we will take this off, trim it and sand out some of these grooves. It's kind of cool because it kind of does give a 3D feel with how these uh, waves go up, especially around the shark face. So um, that's it for this step. Make sure that bottom's coated real quick. All right, we're gonna let this cure for, we'll go another two to three hours. And then we'll be ready for that next part. So I have all the epoxy down. This has been sitting for a few hours and now I'm gonna trim off the bottom. This is how I finish off the bottom of my tumblers and do this for every tumbler. So I have this cup edging tool from Wicked Shimmer. I have it down to the lowest setting that's with the black piece under it. No washer under there, just the other black piece. And then I use a paring knife and I wedge it in between the blade and the lower black piece. I find that this gives the blade a little more stability and when I'm applying pressure and rotating my tumbler, um, it doesn't wobble around on me. So I'm just gonna take this and go straight around the bottom. And what that will do is give me a nice clean line and trim away that epoxy that goes to the bottom of the, of the tumbler. All right, so from there, I'm gonna use my knife and I'm gonna remove the epoxy that's cut off. Find an angle that works for me to show you this. Let me just peel it this way. It's separated and it's just popping right off. Make sure it's cleaned off. Get away all that extra epoxy that went around the bottom. And again, this is how I do the bottom of every tumbler. Make sure all that's trimmed away. Then I have a dry baby wipe and some acetone, and I'm gonna clean it off. Any spots that's still epoxy, so that you're not trying to fight with it, just take your knife and just lift it away. When doing this, if you scratch the bottom of your tumbler a little, all you have to do, because the customer will see this, all you have to do is get a um, steel wool, a piece of steel wool, and just um, run it around the bottom of your tumbler a few times, and that will clean it right up. It'll take out those scratches. All right, keep getting this 
cleaned off. And then I have the little um, cap on the bottom that they give you on your tumbler. I pop that off. Make sure I clean the rest off. Get this really, really clean. Once I get to this step, um, I just have a small name to put on this. I'm gonna clean the um, rim outside, the other end of it, outside the garage. And every step from here is making sure that my epoxy goes on a super clean surface. That way, if I happen to get that really flawless coat of epoxy, um, my ends are already clean and I won't have to worry about um, going back and cleaning it again. See a few spots. That piece off. Okay, now I have a super, super clean rim. A nice pretty edge on there all the way around. It's nice and neat. And then I have my sticker that I put on the bottom of the tumbler. It's a um, one inch sticker. I get them from Sticker Mule. There is a link in the descriptions in the um, little description. So we're gonna put this on here. I'll put it right in the center and then I use my heat gun. And what it does is it just softens up my sticker a little so I can really poke it down into that hole. This is just a regular sticker. It doesn't need the heat for anything to adhere to it other than to just um, soften up that sticker so I can really get it set down in place. See how it kind of sits in there? And now it almost just looks like it's part of the tumbler. From here, if you have UV epoxy, that's usually what I use. Um, with the rain that we're having today, I might have to go with just speed dry. And I'll put a little um, a little drop in here, edge it to the, um, like edge it to, I have a popsicle stick, and I'll just edge it to inside of this little rim. And it will sit right in there and it never comes out. I haven't had one pop out and I do all my tumblers like that. But that would be the bottom of the tumbler. So um, we will get to cleaning up the top and then go on with the name for the back. Okay, so I have the decal on here. Um, I didn't film this, it was just the name Melissa. The font is Canyonland Script. I got that from Creative Market. It is a really, really pretty font. The only thing with it is that it's um, it's kind of on the smaller side. So what I did, like thin, I guess you should I should say. It's sort of thin, so what I did was I gave it an offset. Um, I did 0 0.02 offset. And that made it thick enough where that I can, um, my Cricut can cut it. Because sometimes my Cricut goes all funky and it doesn't want to cut super thin stuff. But um, it worked out perfect. So I offset that to point two and it cut just so pretty on um, tech wrap silver chrome vinyl. And I love that stuff. It weeds so easily. Um, it cuts easy, it weeds easy, it holds up. The shine under epoxy really holds up. It's um, one of my favorite to use as far as like those metallic mirror vinyls go. And they have it in a few different colors, so. Always a fan of that. So here we go, let me get this on. And I'll also take a minute to show you how I do the bottom of this. I'm gonna hit this with a torch. Normally, I just take my time and really let all these bubbles pop on their own, but since I'm using this mirror vinyl, you could see anything. Any type of bubble you have, you will definitely be able to see that. So I'm going to take my time, go through with the torch, make sure everything is popped, and then clean up the bottom. That's all as far as bubbles go. So since I trimmed off the bottom, what I'm doing right now is I'm bringing my epoxy along the edge of it, along that bottom rim. I'm just gonna keep rolling my hand around to make sure that's coated all the way right there. Same thing at the top to make sure those seals are reestablished. And then I'm gonna clean the bottom off. I'm gonna grab an alcohol. running out of supplies right here. All right, so I have my rubbing alcohol and I have just a napkin. 
And I'm gonna take it and just go around the bottom of the tumbler and I'm just wiping off any extra epoxy that may have dripped along that bottom rim. I already have my sticker on there from that last step, so I don't have to do anything else to the bottom of this. Um, well, except for adding the epoxy over my sticker. Like I said, it's super rainy today, so and I don't have a good lamp. See, this is why I don't like using just napkins with acetone, I mean with alcohol or acetone, because it just, it gets funky. It just flakes away. All right, so that's cleaned up. Torch it one more time just to be sure. Hope everything lay down. And that's it, guys. Like that is the end of this tutorial. It's super easy. It's definitely a done in a day design if you have like a full day to just set it all in steps. Um, all the colors just stayed away the way we need them to, except for the top where it kind of too much epoxy got it runny. But um, but that's it. Super easy. Hope you guys like this tutorial. Please jump over to Facebook and find our Sippy Couture community group. We're doing a bunch of lives over there. And um, there's a few lives that I'll be doing all over in the um, Mr. Nola's Glitter group as well. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoy this, and we'll see you soon.